Så skal vi til noget lidt andet. Edward Snowden og Bradley Manning er nylige eksempler på fænomenet Whistleblowers. Et fænomen, der har sendt en slags chokbølger gennem efterretningstjenester og regeringer i de seneste år. Og i disse dage er to Whistleblowers fra Irakkrigen i landet. Den ene er Lawrence Wilkerson, som var stabschef for Colin Powell og lavede den præsentation, som Powell i februar 2003 fremlagde i FN Sikkerhedsråd. Den anden, Catherine Gunn, var ansat ved den britiske efterretningstjeneste og læggede i 2003 oplysninger til avisen The Observer i månederne op til invasionen. De to besøger Danmark i forbindelse med Copenhagen Docs, hvor filmen Krigskampagnen vises. Filmen med en beretning om Irakkrigens optakt og det politiske spil mellem blandt andet USA, Storbritannien og Danmark. Jeg havde den amerikanske og britiske whistleblower her i studiet tidligere på aftenen. Catherine Gunn offentliggjorde mails, der indskærpede efterretningstjenesten. Bare skulle se at komme i gang med at finde alt, der overhovedet kunne bruges til at retfærdiggøre en invasion i Irak. Det blev hun både fyret for og retsforfuldt for, og jeg spurgte hende, hvorfor hun gjorde det. Uh, well, if we go back in time uh, and try to remember the public mood, uh, I think most of the world, millions of people were against the invasion of Iraq. I was working at GCHQ. Mm. I came into information that uh, really angered me. It made me feel like what was going on behind the scenes uh, between Bush and Blair were essentially um, completely the opposite of what they were presenting to the public. And I felt it was information that was potentially uh, important enough it would could possibly derail the entire uh, process of war. Right. And you did it on most, most whistleblowers or people who leak this kind of information actually while it was going on. Mm -hmm. Most cases, people wait till afterwards. Did you actually think that you could stop this from happening? I genuinely hoped, uh, I ge yes, I genuinely hoped that the information would Uh, strengthen the the people's voice. It would demand clarity. It would demand transparency. I felt that the information was, yeah, I, I, I thought it was explosive. It really made me angry when I read it. Right. You you didn't you didn't leak information just in the middle of the whole discussion about the invasion of Iraq, but you've been very informative in talking about the process afterwards. Why did you talk? Let me say first that uh, I have no uh, claim to courage that I think Catherine does for that very reason. But when I did start to speak out, it was primarily because of the torture issue. Um, you pile all these things on an old soldier like me, uh, torture, surveillance, drone strikes, um, a war that probably shouldn't have happened and so forth, and uh, my loyalty to my service and so forth goes out the window and my loyalty to my country takes over, and that's kind of when I started speaking out, particularly yes. because of the torture issue. Right. But, but what you were talking about was the process, the, the, the information and how the information about Iraq's uh, weapons of mass destruction actually was, was, was treated. Mm -hmm. That was the, what you were talking about. Why did you talk about that? It was my job to, once the secretary picked me to put his presentation for the UN Security Council together, it was my job to do that to the best ability I could. Uh, both he and I had to depend on the U.S. intelligence community and, by extension, its contacts with the Germans, the French, the Israelis and other intelligence communities for the information that we were presenting. Yeah. Um, and we walked into uh, what was essentially a trap in mm -hmm. terms of uh, the validity of that information. It's. It's really, as you both know, of course, and you heard this critique before, it's really the, the heart, the core, the raison d'etre of, 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 of the intelligence services to work as a closed uh, entity operating also in areas where questions of mor morality and, and, and law are not, 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 not so clear. Could you say that by leaking, exposing secrets, you are questioning this whole phenomenon? Uh, well... Let me just point out that uh, classified information, or the reason for gathering classified information, in the UK, anyway, is divided into three reasons. Mm. Economic, well, first of all, it's uh, national security. Then it is economic well-being. And finally, it is uh, a serious crime. Mm. Now, I would like to ask anybody who challenges what I did to 
tell me under which category that information falls into. Right. But, the, but, but, but what I'm asking here is, 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 is the, the idea that you are actually gathering secret information, you are operating not in a transparent way. It doesn't really include that people who are working in the services well, expose. Let, let, me, uh, let me pick up on what Catherine said and, and augment a little bit by saying that I know any number of people in our intelligence community, CIA, DIA, NSA, who are first-class professionals. Yeah. There, there were people like that when Powell and I were compiling his presentation at the UN. We were not exposed to them. I have subsequently learned that there were people in the, in the bowels, so to speak, of the CIA, for example, who vehemently objected to what George Tenet was doing and his deputy, John McLaughlin, vehemently objected to what Powell was being uh, told he had to present at the United yeah. Nations, but their voices never were heard. Now, a question in my mind might be, why didn't one of them come out and right. blow the whistle, as right. it were? Now there's a huge discussion about Edward Snowden, of course. Uh, do you think he's done a good thing by leaking the information he, he's been leaking? <laughs> yeah, I think we're both on agreement on this. It's a good thing. Isn't it? I think so. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Let's, let's just hear what President Obama thinks. No, I don't think Mr. Snowden was a patriot. Uh, as I said in my opening remarks, I called for a thorough review of our surveillance operations before Mr. Snowden made these leaks. My preference, and I think the American people's preference, would have been for a lawful, orderly examination of these laws. Incredible naivete on the part of the President of the United States. Really? Incredible naivete. Anyone who's been in the bowels of the United States military or government, as I have for over 35 years, knows that if you go through the chain of command, as we say in the military, you will be crucified. Yeah, mm -hmm. as Sabal Evans was, and another uh, U.S. whistleblower. Um, and that's, that's an accusation that they charged me with. Why didn't I go through the yeah. chain of command? Yeah. And uh, as you say, you, you would, it would get swept under the carpet First and foremost, they would, uh, you know, take their time over, d deliberately hold information back for as long as possible. Uh, uh, you would be under surveillance from that point onwards, uh, and, and it, there would be no, no yeah. but what would, outcome. But yeah, but, but, but what he's talking about here is uh, what else could he say? And that could, you could argue it would be difficult for the president of the United States to say Of course, say, he, say he could otherwise. say I agree with him. And, and, yet, and, yet, and yet I campaigned as a Republican. Yeah. I campaigned for President Obama in his first run for the presidency. And I worked with his people and I worked with him. And I would not have expected him to show that kind of naivete but what he's and saying to say is that something, to the American maybe, people. Maybe it's not naivety. Maybe he's, maybe he's just talking about loyalty. You're working, you chose to work in an institution that works secretly. Transparency is simply an the opposite of an what An institution, though, that belongs to the United States of America, mm. which has a constitution and has laws. Right. And what does that mean? It means that the constitution and those laws are a higher mm. authority than mm. any person to whom you might be loyal. But uh, Obama's argument against a guy like Snowden, and maybe also to the two of you, you w would be that he that that, that that he's he's simply questioning the whole idea of a state working in secret. The very core of a secret service by exposing. I don't think that's like the case. I, I I think again, 35 years in the government, mm -hmm. I protected a lot of state secrets. I think there are things that need protecting. Take, for example, the negotiations ongoing between the P5 plus one mm -hmm. and Iran right now. Those conversations, until they come to fruition, need protecting. Right. But that's less than 1% of the total business of government. We protect about 95% of the total business right. of government, not for classification purposes in reality, but to protect people who are abusing Why? power Why in private. Why would do that? Is this a bad habit? It's a terribly bad habit, Is but it's it? something that people do. Right. Mm -hmm. So actually, what, what you're saying that Snowden has done, he's been correct to question and block the secretive nature of a democratic government. Absolutely. Because he's not been pointing at a concrete case as you have, mm -hmm. Iraq or Iran or whatever, mm -hmm. Syria. He's been actually just leaking everything. 
Uh, I would say not everything. Yeah. He's redacted and he, he's blacked out information. Right, but, but it, it's yeah. a different, different but way it, of doing it. It's about the structure of the system. Yeah. Uh, and the system is not working for the people anymore. Uh, in, in what, in, in what, in what there, way? In what way? Well, is there, it not? There, there's no question, I think, that some of the revelations that Snowden and Bradley Manning and others have let out of the bag, so to speak, there's no question that there may be some damage done. Right. But the overall good done in letting the American people and the world, for that matter, know what their government is doing in their name in secret outweighs that damage. Let's look at the damage that might have been done. The NSA chief, uh, Keith Alexander, is quite sure of what he thinks. Let's, let's watch. Is the revealing of these programs allow terrorists to know the best weapons that we have against them? It will cause irreversible and significant damage. And it means that terrorists now have an upper edge in conducting attacks, probably in Europe and potentially in the United States. And our ability to stop them is reduced. And so when people die, those that are responsible for leaking it are the ones who should be held accountable. First of all, um, and, and this is coming from 31 years in the United States Army, same service as that man. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. The guy at the top, the four star, only knows what the three stars tell him, who only know what the two stars tell him, who only know what the colonels tell but them. The substance of what he's saying is that the NSA, all this intelligence gathering, has one important purpose, to stop harm, violence, terror attacks against civilians. I've been and there. And they do. I've been there. They have not got a sterling record at doing that, but they do have mm. a sterling record at compiling data mm. on people they don't need to be call, uh, compiling data on. But maybe, aren't you saying that even if they do this, even if they actually do stop a terror attack here and there, it's actually better to expose all this to prevent harm from being done. It depends. What do you think? I don't think exposing uh, the information which they have exposed is going to affect their work on uh, gathering information against potential terrorists or any, any sort of threat. Um, you know, any terrorist knows that there's uh, signals, intelligence, capabilities. Uh, they, they know how to um, cover up their communications mm. uh, and hide their communications. So it, it, that's an open secret. You know, right. it, it's, it's Joe Blog. It's, yeah. it's the average person sitting at home on their computer that didn't know this was all going on or all behind their back. What, 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 you, when you came with your, with your information, it didn't stop the war. You, the Iraq war is over. Uh, do you think that what Snowden is doing now is actually changing anything? One would hope that it is. I'm involved right now in trying to prevent yet another war in Western Asia, a war with Iran. And if what he has said and done has alerted the American people in a way that keeps them from supporting such a war, mm. then I say more power to him. What, what do you think? Does it make a difference? I agree. I think uh, he sets an example to people that uh, they need to scrutinize the uh, political system, they need to scrutinize their political representatives, uh, and the budgets, you know, what their money, what the taxpayers' money is being spent on. Thanks for coming, both of you. Thanks for having me. Thank you.